What's going on, everybody? This is a special one. We have with us today the man behind the Pillar of Garbage YouTube channel. If you don't know who he is, he's the biggest EMH YouTuber right now. It's really cool to have him talk off the cuff. Uh, it's gonna you're gonna see a different side of him hopefully with this interview. So here he is. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show, Spectre Watch. Glad to have you, bro. So let's get the obvious questions out of the way. EMH, that's how we ended up meeting, because we both got in contact with the leaker who dropped a couple of these EMH leaks online. And, uh, you know, first things first, do you see the show coming back? And how do you think the show comes back? I honestly don't know, but I think it's, you know, it's, I think it's a much bigger possibility now than it was even when I made my first video on it, just because of, I mean, the X-Men 97 thing is, is huge, I think. It shows that Marvel Studios famously protective about mcu brand cohesion and what have you are actually considering previous non-connected projects as viable you know future content and you know it maybe it won't happen but i think it's definitely something worth trying to achieve i think it comes down to this new multiverse thing you know like anything could happen and that's where all of this stuff comes in yostverse has a place in the vast multiverse now and that's that's what they're trying to go for. And the X-Men thing yeah. is very hopeful. Yeah, if it does happen, I, I think you're right that it'll be sort of framed within the context of the MCU multiverse as, you know, a sort of what-if type arm of this, 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 this world. Right. And so when I say how, I, I mean kind of what format. I've heard a couple of people say, you know, they want a couple of movies. I'm a bit of a purist. I want the season. Uh, what do you kind of want to see out of it? I think it would be best if it were brought back in as similar a format to the original show as possible because you know movies are great sure but like one of the best things about it was the way it sort of built up these these longer narratives while well you know telling self-contained episodes and with a movie you don't really get to do that of i'm course sure not. the characters would still be great the writing would be great but it you know it would be best as a series yeah i i totally agree as i said i'm a purist about it but you know, people are throwing ideas out there, and I, I wouldn't be opposed to a movie, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah. I'll take anything I can get. At, at this point, it's season one, I feel like, was as flawless as you can make a a show with the build-up, with the whole villain thing. They teased Loki and the Enchantress at the beginning, then he's and he and she are at the end of it, kind of doing the whole master thing, and then, uh, you know, they... they Put that all in there and it's just the best build up to any animated show i've seen to be fair yeah i mean it gets compared a bit to some of these sort of dc animated projects which rightfully i haven't so. seen all of rightfully so yeah but like correct me if i'm wrong the the sort of big justice league animated cartoon that sort of spun off a little bit from was it the batman animated series i believe so i i've heard yeah. different things about it because there was the justice league original series and then there was the unlimited series yeah, well, you know, the, some of these things that it's often compared to, you know, they didn't have the same... It's like the movies, right? The Avengers film is great, but it built off the the solo films, the Phase 1 films. But EMH, you know, its first season, the fantastic first season, as you point out, you know, it all of this from scratch to a massive conclusion in 26 episodes. And yeah. that's, you know, really No, I totally get what you're saying. Um, that's, that's what we want out of it. So one more obvious thing. You have a favorite episode? I have a soft spot for Emperor Stark. I know that, you know, it's one of, if you look into it, then the original plans when, when Yost was coming up with the idea drafts, you know, it was going to be Emperor Doom, and it got a bit sort of manhandled by the, the showrunner change and this, that, and the other. But I just think that's a really fun episode to watch, you know, whatever was going on behind the scenes. It's got a, it's definitely got a good storyline. So um, let's completely switch into everything else that we're thinking about. Uh, I, I want to see how it gets bring back, uh, brought back because there is, of course, the idea that it can be saved. I think that comes, obviously, from the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut was a belief, a uh, fan movement, and then they just generated enough hype for you know the Whedon Cut to be different from the Snyder Cut, and they had a certain amount of demands. They wanted this much to happen in order to bring it back, and I think most, if not all, were fulfilled. One of the things that I kind of you know, start thinking about is, hey, are they going to be able to bring back the original cast? Are they going to be able to bring back the original writers, et cetera, et cetera? Because 
what's the point of bringing it back if it's not in its purest form, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the impression I get is that if they ever were to do this, they would bring back as many original voices as they could. But, I mean, you, you compare it to the Snyder Cut and the, you know, the, the Justice League stuff and all that, I think talking about if and how it could be brought back, I think looking at that as the the example against which we should compare Save the Yostverse is telling because... You know, ever since that happened, there's been so many sort of spin-off movements trying to bring this back or bring that back. And, you know, there have been some successes, I guess, but not no really major the ones. of the... Yeah, right. And I think, you know, I could be wrong here, but is that not because the Snyder Cut, you know, the Justice League is, was a, a massive tentpole movie with celebrities supporting the movement? I think that's the only way we really see a a solid chance of this getting back. If the original people really want it to come back, it will come back, right? If the original people come back, but also, you know, high-profile voices, I think, are the key thing. Yeah, I don't know who those would be, and it's trickier because it's a cartoon. It's not, you know, it's not a AAA movie. It's not, you know, this massive box office, you know, millions of dollars grossing thing. It's, people liked it, but it's, it's relatively smaller and, you know, people on the street aren't going to know the voice actors. So I think the the Justice League, the Snyder Cut makes for an interesting comparison because who would those voices be? Who could we get? Well, to offer you some pushback right here, right? I could just say that it would be a lot easier to make a uh, uh, EMH season three than it would be to make a high budget, uh, huge blockbuster movie such as the Snyder Cut because it's easier to get those people back involved. When we talk about the Snyder Cut, Gal Gadot could be doing her own thing. Ben Affleck could be doing his own thing. Henry Cavill, you know, Jason Momoa could all be doing different things. However, you getting those huge names back together is a lot tougher than getting a few of the original voice actors back together. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I I agree that you know from a log, from a logistical standpoint, it would be a lot easier to get this done. I think if we got if we got to the point where Marvel was seriously considering it, then. You know, at that point, we face a, a, a more of a downhill battle compared to what the Snyder Cut folks faced. But it's that initial recognition that we need to get. Of course, yeah. Um, the, you know, the conversation that needs to be had is how do they not mess it up? And one thing that I actually just doing a little snooping around your channel, I found that you did a video called uh, Jordan Peterson Said Another Dumb Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I like that video, and our political views aren't exactly the same from what I've under- for what I understand, but we can agree that some things that that man says are absolutely ridiculous and should be called out. So, uh, you know, props to you for calling that out. Um, however, there was a comic that I recently saw that I wanted to talk about in relation to EMH. What happens is, in these days, right, in this day and age, everything needs to be about current events, whether that be a... Marvel cartoon or whether that be a blockbuster movie we see it happen with Iron Man 3 it was a you know at that point there was that whole stigma around a certain group and you had to make everything like that and I think they as uh, you know I, I think they did it well in comparison to how they could have done it I just don't want to see that in EMH I don't know how much you agree with that I think um do you I think, think do you think real world events should be included and I'll get back to Jordan Peterson in a second I don't think they have to be included. I don't think, you know, I I wouldn't agree necessarily with your idea that, you know, everything these days has to sort of, you know, always reflect the things out, you know, the real world. I, you know, I I like it when things do. And, but EMH was, you know, it, it was always very, very consciously a nostalgic show, you know, reveling in the sort of 60s vibes. Of course, exactly, exactly. I think it's, you know, in retrospect, it's easy to, to look at that show and see it out of context and just think, oh, you know, you know, there's there's nothing about the Middle East in here. So it's it's you know, ten years ago we didn't have to we didn't have to worry about politics in our in our programming. But I think at the time even Earth's My East Heroes was very self consciously a nostalgic comic based property, you know I think those can still exist and you know You think they, there can be a mix. You, you think there can be a mix of both here, yeah, that's what you're saying. I think I think they I think they could. And speaking as someone who you know, some of the things I look for most in in media and pop culture are the way they reflect real world events. I 
that doesn't have to happen for everything, right? Right, that's what I'm saying, actually. I would be more actually. than happy to see Earth's Mightiest Hero Season 3 that continues the tone of the original. There was a certain magic about it that it was escapism, right? Because not everything needs to be um, based on reality. And the reason I bring this up, obviously, this is such a random thing to bring up, but the reason I bring this up is because I had a very more, I had like a much more specific thing in mind. There was the Jordan Peterson thing that I mentioned. There was a comic in April 2021, uh, by a Captain America comic, that used uh, a portion of something that Jordan Peterson had written, or I believe said somewhere, and they had put it in this, you know, comic book for, and the Red Skull was saying it. So the Red Skull was saying words that were Jordan Peterson's words. And the reason, as much as I think, you know, it was valid to have used that as a criticism of the person, the show then, or the comic then, becomes about that. And I think that needs to be avoided at all costs. I don't, I don't know if I'd go that far. I think, on a conceptual level, Captain America is inherently political and always has been. But I think on a more more case-by-case -case sort of concrete basis, this has been a thing we've seen in comics for decades. Like, look at look at Captain America resigning the, 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 the Stars and Stripes after the Watergate scandal turning into Nomad, you know? That's, uh, a, that's a classic right, part right. of comic history that we've seen brought over to the MCU. That's directly inspired by politics far more so than uh, Red Skull quoting Jordan Peterson, which... <laughs> I didn't know about that. That's no, hilarious. That, that is hilarious. And I, I just I thought... Mean, I, get, I get that not everyone's going to think that's a good idea. And, like, you know, I, I kind of... I can see where, why people wouldn't like that. But personally, I think that's awesome. No, I, th I think it's funny. It's, like, one thing that I just think is that then every headline becomes about that. You know what I mean? Like, every headline is Jordan Peterson in Captain America, blah, blah, blah. Jordan Peterson in this, blah, blah, blah. And then it, it stops being about what the show really is. That's what kind of my main concern was about that. I guess maybe, but also, you know, when you're the artist creating the work, I, I, I prefer it. I would prefer a world in which, you know, the writers of these things don't have to think about how the media is going to report on it. I'd, I'd like them to just do what write. they want. Yeah, I, I can totally get behind that. Consequences be damned. Yeah, that I can tell. You know what? I can totally get behind that because it's it's about that, right? It's your expression, and then people do what they want with it. Yeah, okay. they're free to. You're free to create whatever you want. People are free to respond to that in whatever way they want, be that you know individually or as a media outlet. But you know, let's not let's not take that off the table because it's a valid form of criticism. I true. Think. True. All right. So let's talk a little bit about. We talked about risk. Let's talk about reward. Um, how does this, well, we got to talk about how we can get to that reward. Obviously, if they are able to do this, if we are able to get the attention of these people, it would be huge. It would be one of the greatest things. And, it, you know, it'd be really cool for, you know, you and I, two YouTubers to be leading the charge in this, uh, or partnered with more people even. The first save Avengers EMH, save the Yostverse trend. What do you think the reason was that that failed and you know it didn't fail fail but it didn't get trending and it didn't meet the goal that was you know necessarily put out there for it i think when we're talking about this we're, we're always to some degree we have in mind the snyder cut as a, a reference point because that's sort of this successful example so comparing the save the use first event to the to that which eventually became successful you know the hurdles this faces is that it's 10 years old and a lot of people watched it and a lot of people loved it, but they maybe did so, a lot of them as children or teenagers, sort of watching it, go, growing up, going through a lot of different things that they, that they liked. And maybe today they're in a, at a point in their life where, you know, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes is just a show they've kind of forgotten about, but they really liked back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I think the hurdle is... It, it's a small fan community for a show that's been off the air for a number of years. It's turning that into... A, getting that to a place where it can interface with the massive Marvel fandom that obviously exists. Right, right, right. And again, one of the things would be like, it just needs... Because I know I noticed on your videos, originally, obviously, you got into it via, via Nando vs. Movies. That whole, that whole playlist is where you got your recognition... And well deserved, by the way. Your content is doing very well. And even after that, you know, you see that there are hundreds of thousands of people at at points, even today, who are willing to at least click on a video and relive that part of their childhood for you know whatever amount of time. I think there's definitely a a chance for us to get trending if 
a few, even a, a group of those, a handful of those people decide to one day tweet about that. But it has to be a united at one time thing. One thing that I saw during the uh, Save the EMH thing was that when you go back, you see that these tweets were done at different times and it wasn't it wasn't organized well enough. And no disrespect to them, but I think it could have been organized so that every tweet could have been at the at one point. Yeah, I think that was the goal. I think I, you know, I, I wasn't sat there on Twitter refreshing the hashtag as it came out. No, no, neither sure. was I. The impression I get is that some of these tweets from later on in the day uh, were maybe follow-up tweets from people who had also tweeted at the start. I think we see a lot of tweets, but there, there's, there's, there's not that maybe not that many people, comparatively speaking, to the ratio of actual tweets who are doing the tweeting. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it is about just. I mean, organization obviously plays a massive part, and it. I'm sure. It, I'm sure there are ways it could be done better. But I think the crucial part is is numbers and interest above logistics at the moment, from my perspective. Yeah, I think YouTube is a great place to do it. I think once we, me and you, start really pumping out some more EMH videos, I think we've both been a little, little dry on the EMH front for a little while. I've been doing a little bit of a. Uh, we, me and my bro, have been doing some Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad. I don't know if you, if you're really a fan of those. I haven't seen them, you know. I've heard good things. It's one one of the one of those things that comes out. Everyone talks really positively about, and then I think, well, you know, everyone's already seen it now. What's the point of me seeing it? I'm already behind the curve. Right, right, right. You gotta. I mean, season six is about to come out for uh, Better Call Saul, so that that might be something you want to hop on to. But yeah, it's. I think the main goal right here would be to get enough numbers on a platform friendly to emh as we've seen like uh like youtube for example and just if marvel executives see that there are this many views on a video they might think well you know this might be worth bringing back x-men was brought back similarly to that do you think there are any other shows in the yostverse that deserve to be rebooted because everyone always says emh but i think there are a couple other shows that i'd personally spectacular spider-man would be one of them that i'd talk i'd talk about yeah, I mean, it depends on how you define the Yostverse. Spectacular Spider-Man is, you know, there's a few different people behind it. And, you know, is it in the same universe? Isn't it? It's a little more complex. But if we're thinking, if we're counting that, then I think that definitely deserves to return as much as Avengers does. But, you know, the this, this sort of studio politics of that show, why it was cancelled. Honestly, I'd love to see it come back, but I don't really see a way it could. Maybe a continuation in some other form is mm -hmm. possible anything other than the continuations up. we got right yeah so avengers assemble was the uh continuation of avengers emh obviously they we can we can sit here for another half an hour and just talk about how they messed that up but um yeah i mean the, there are a lot of shows out of the yostverse that deserve to be brought back for sure and if we can maybe get their attention we should so that's all cool. Let's talk about you for a second. What's uh, what's your plans for YouTube? What's your future goals and all that for YouTube? I will I will consider myself to have made it on YouTube when I get to a point where I can earn enough money from YouTube to live. <laughs> just pretty much, yeah. To to I, live, I right? That that's that's yeah. couldn't have said it better. Just to live. Just you want enough money from YouTube so that you don't have to worry about getting money from other places necessarily. Yeah, like it's it's a bit funny the way my channel sort of happened. Basically, um, that that initial success with the first couple of EMH videos I made, not the you know not the other videos I made at that point, they didn't really do that well. But when when I started growing quite rapidly from nothing to like you know a small channel. That came around the time I was finishing my master's degree. And, you know, normally I'd have been searching frantically for a job. But I thought, you know, hey, if I can scale this growth, then maybe this could be the job. So since then, I've more or less tried to do it full time. And you're very consistent, been... by the way. I just can I point that out. Like we are not nearly uh, I think we're very similar in age. You just said uh, your master's degree and I'm currently, you know, doing doing education as well i'm pursuing a bachelor's uh almost done with it uh, right now but it's like you are every two days or so i believe you're dropping uh, something like that every two to three? every three days yeah sometimes if i've got you know if there's videos that i want out for a certain time because you know something's happening it'll be two days but two to three days mostly yeah wow no that's that's content and 
So what's your motivation behind finding the content? Are you just kind of like how we are that you look for trends and you kind of jump on those or you kind of just make videos on whatever you think of? It's I've got it's more more the second I have like a massive list of videos that I would ideally make and it's like trying to get some of them done every month while you know things happen movies release TV shows come out and I I try a part of me tries to you know cover these new trending things in some way but you know I never really managed to I never really managed to keep on top of things too well. I was hoping to make a Spider-Man um, Spider No Way Home video when that came out. I still haven't got around to doing that That's yet. so funny because we had the same issue. We actually ended up making different videos because my bro was like, why would we go through the effort of making a giant, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home highly produced video and then, you know, it gets 40 views or 30 views and they're like, oh, well, I put so much work into it. What's going on? So it is disappointing for that, and especially when you know another format of videos that maybe takes you a little bit less effort will do better. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I mean, that sort of. I'm a similar thing is what I'm dealing with right now. I've got this. It's probably going to be like forty-five, fifty-minute long video on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Wow. And, you know, part of me knows that I could put out. I could spend like a, a tenth of the time making an Earth's Mightiest Heroes video, and that'd probably get more views. But I mean, you know, another if just talking about me for a, a little bit more one of the one of the things that i'm trying to do here is i don't want this to just be the marvel channel or even you know the earth's my east heroes channel totally I understand this, that i wouldn't want to do this as a full time job if it's if i could only make it work doing content that narrow i'd only feel sort of fulfilled if i could just be 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 broader with things you know make a video on i made a video on a couple of weeks ago about did, did you ever watch spongebob do you, do you ever see that episode where squidward moves to the the neighborhood of identical I, squid people oh my god i can totally remember that from my childhood yeah so i i just you know one of my friends sent me a meme about the squidward ethno state and then i thought hey i want to make a video on that you know it didn't do very well it did it did all right considering it wasn't <sighs> you know marvel or anything but like my my vision of what youtube success looks like is where i can make that video and not have to think Oh, am I gonna earn enough from this? That right, I right, right. To... Exactly what I'm chasing right now. Obviously, yeah. on a much smaller scale, we're 1K. You're 15, which is crazy. It's about. I think your content just. Uh, you know, it's not like yo, you're my guest. I have to say nice things about you right now. It's like I genuinely just think your content is good. You've made a couple of videos that I've seen. Uh, you know, more than a couple of videos that I've seen, where I was like, yeah, I'd watch this. Like I, I look forward to a drop of a particular thing. But the the thing about YouTube is that you can't be boxed in where it's like, you know, I can only make Marvel uh, Marvel videos. I can only make EMH videos. You can't box yourself in like that because then at some point, especially with a thing like EMH, you run out of content. It was only two seasons, 40 something yeah. episodes. And moreover, maybe even, you know, more dangerous than running out of content, you're going to get burned out if you just do the same thing over and over again. And that's what we're chasing right now. We're trying to find our niche. And I, I we spoke a little bit off air about this, like, we, we found mediocre success with reviews. We then found a good amount of success, which kind of got us to the 1K mark with leaks and uh, certain niche TV show reviews. And now we're kind of doing whatever comes to mind. We found a good bit of a little bit of success here and there with these short reviews. I see you've also done similar things with those one minute reviews. It just it, that happens to work. So we're just trying everything until it is. But you have to make what you want to make. And it's about like people need to get to know you and that's the main yeah. thing right you then they watch what you have to say and that's the thing it's like there's there's some of the, some of the biggest channels on youtube are like you know they don't have a, a niche in the traditional sense they'll talk about you know i, I watch say h bomber guy or big joel i don't know if you watch those guys but you know they could h bomber guy make a video about the level design in, in a dark souls game and then i'll make a video about the tv show sherlock and then i'll make a video about a movie right and then i'll make a video about uh, maybe a book or, and then i'll make a video about youtube personalities and uh, you know all of these will do well because people like him and they like the. Way and that's the end goal topics. that's the end goal that's because the end goal. there are very few people who can only watch one thing like i can name so i don't know if you know this channel it's called uh, star wars theory it's about two million subscribers uh, I think I've seen a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, my bro is a huge Star Wars fan. I'm the Marvel guy. He's a Star Wars guy. We've kind of, you know, knowing each other for so long, obviously. We're, we're like, we're not brothers, but we're like really close friends to a point where it's brothers. Um, we've gotten each other into the each other's world. So he's now a huge Marvel fan. I'm now a huge Star Wars fan. But that's not, 
I can't just watch Star Wars. I can't just watch Marvel. I will watch something else. And if, you know, my favorite YouTuber happens to talk about that person too, I'm going to watch him. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's strange that because I, I agree with what you're saying and that's the way I go about, you know, that's, that's the way I go about watching YouTubers and that's the way a lot of, you know, my community go about watching me, I think. But in my experience, I mean, you know, it's not much experience, but I find that when you do get success talking about a niche, a specific thing, for me, it's been Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which has always been my, my biggest draw. YouTube kind of really wants you to go in deeper into the niche. It doesn't want you to talk about other things. And that's great for short-term success, but like, it's not great for the future of the, the channel or the person behind the channel. And it's, it's, it's so strange the way there's, there's almost a disconnect between the way people like to watch YouTube and like to watch YouTubers and the way the system tries to fight that. Yeah, but you know, we, we, you've done a good chunk of the beginning part by getting found via EMH. So now that you've been found, there are, I'd like to say, a couple thousand people for you that will watch your video regardless of what it is about, whether it is that Avengers EMH niche. Maybe you'll get 70,000 when you get, uh, you know, a, a, a niche video out, but then you'll get two to three or four or 5,000 when you get you know, a, a thing that you want to do. I don't know what your uh, Squidward video that you were mentioning is at right now, but I'm sure it's above, it's, what is it, above a K? It's, yeah, it's 2.8 at the moment. But so, I mean, that was the, that's a, that's almost a bad example because that came up, I was doing a bit of different stuff at that time and that's by far the best performing one. The, I did a, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi thing and that's less than a K. I uh, did a video on Disenchantment, which I which was one of the first things I talked about on the channel and that's, only just broached a K after about two weeks. Mm -hmm. So maybe my experience is 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 uh, non typical, but I think that's one of the things I've been struggling with recently is trying to trying to get people into me rather than into Earth's Listen, it, it'll it'll happen. I'm definitely somebody who who watches a lot of the videos for the way you talk. Um, when I've seen more more of the recent videos, even the Jordan Peterson one, like I said, uh, it's not something that I would typically watch. I'm not that political, to be honest with you. Uh, however, like I watched it and I was like, oh yeah, he, the title's right. He said a dumb thing and then he talked about it. So there you go. Like you, you're doing well in that. And at least, you know, you aren't facing a, a problem that I'm facing right now, which is that a video, well, maybe you are. I, I can't speak to what you're facing here, but I, sometimes I think, you know, I might drop something and it might get three to four views and that's it. It yeah. might die. So I'm really concerned about that sometimes. There are some videos where I know I'm going to put this out. It's going to be a couple thousand. I'm going to be, you know, happy days. But there are a couple of videos where I'm like, oh, damn, this might get like three video, three views. And then this, this video is going to be dead. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, could, could definitely be worse from my perspective. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure soon that will start to pick up for, from yours. Yeah, no, it, it hopefully, hopefully soon come. We'll get a little bit more of this and hopefully, you know, doing some EMH stuff with you and all that. This is what I want to do. That's the thing. I'm aware that EMH can result in, you know, nothing because EMH is like, it's not the biggest thing anymore. It's not, you know, a Doctor Strange multiverse of madness. If I become the top rated video in that versus me becoming yeah, the top yeah, rated. It's swimming in views. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a huge gap between them, but it was a dream of mine where it's like, you know what, this show is great. Why can't we bring it back? We're two young guys who know a leaker, for Christ's sake. Like, who? how many people can say they know a leaker? And, like, who's actually connected and has provided us with evidence. And now we're like, you know, we can maybe lead a charge and get this show to come back. That's what I want to do. And if it's one of the things I do on YouTube, I'll be proud of that. That's how I see it. Yeah. Uh, on that note, um, I've, I've got these... I've, I've, I've had an idea. It's not finalized or concrete yet but it it might be might be a step in 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 the right direction for this so uh might as well tell you about it um i am thinking i think the next the next trend event that they're planning for the the hashtag is like mid-may so i thought it might be a good idea if i sort of set out a collaborative playlist like like the one that my first video got in only on a smaller scale in this emh community and get my viewers other people who like the show maybe reach out to a couple of big con content creators well bigger content bigger creators. than us and, yeah 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 bigger than us but then also people our size people 
way smaller people with 10 subs you know anybody right because then it becomes yeah. becomes a big thing yeah i actually have i have a little like topics list and one of them is a youtube live event that would you know there are these i don't know how much uh, into sports and all you are but they're always watch parties especially for combat sports they're watch parties and they get people to come in they watch we talk about things together we all kind of have this thing and you know you and i could definitely we, we need to talk about this more in the future, obviously, just we need to plan more if we're ever to do this. There's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for things like that that go beyond just posting videos, right? Of course, of course. There's so many things we could do with that. And, you know, it's gl- I'm glad that we kind of have this connection now that we can figure out some of the stuff and maybe make it a reality. The YouTube playlist idea is very good, by the way, and I'm this is definitely going to be a clip. Submit so your YouTube videos for the playlist. And Earth's Mightiest Playlist. Earth's it's Mightiest Playlist. mid-June. May, I think, maybe. Maybe. Whenever it is, bro, I'm, I'm with you. You know you got one smallish channel that is uh, willing to help you out with this because it's my dream too. So. Yeah, okay. Well, if this is going to be a clip, I'll just say uh, tweet me, come on my Discord. If you have a video you want to get in there, you know, I'll, 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 I'll make it happen. 100%. I think we, we definitely need to do uh, just me and you and a lot of other people, whoever is really interested in it. It would be great to do more collabs. Uh, maybe we could do one out of your realm, which is more video essay, less off the cuff. Uh, maybe you and I could do something like that in the future. Yeah, for sure. 100%. All right, let the people know where they can find you. Uh, they probably know who you are, but in the case that they don't, let them know where they can find you. What's your Twitter, Discord, all that. Let them know. Yeah, uh, Pillar of Garbage on YouTube, obviously, at Pillar Garbage on Twitter. I've got, like, I don't know, Patreon, Discord. That's linked on both sites. So come and, come and, come and, come and have a look. Yeah, meet this guy. He's very cool. I'm glad we talked, bro, because it's clear that me and you have this passion for YouTube. And uh, I think this is going to be just the beginning, but I'm very happy to have you on. It was a real exciting thing for me. I mentioned this online. Uh, I mentioned this off air a little while ago that I have always wanted to do this interview type thing and uh, a chat with somebody. And you gave me the opportunity. Of, you are our first guest. And I, you, I think I, you. I'm your first. Yeah, uh, you're, you're my first interviewer. You you wouldn't know that it was your first time doing it, so, you know, <laughs> keep, keep doing it. It was a pleasure, man.